Hi, everyone. I'm Kate Hartman. I'm Chris Luganbuehl. We are here from the Social Body Lab at OCAD University in Toronto, Canada. Although we're actually in different cities, I'm in Berlin. And I'm in Victoria, British Columbia. Yeah. So uh, anyway, but we're so glad to be able to join you remotely. And so we are here to talk about our project, uh, kinetic, kinetic Wearables Toolkits, uh, Actuator Mounts, and Attachment Methods for Wearable Electronics Prototyping. So today we will share with you a little bit of the context for this work, our design consideration, the first version of the designs for the Kinetic Wearables Toolkit, a um, couple of examples of it in use, and then thoughts about future work. So our interest in this project started a number of years ago when the Social Body Lab team was developing their own Kinetic Wearables projects, um, or our own Kinetic Wearables projects. And so uh, these featured wearable pleated textile forms that opened and closed in response to the muscle activity of the wearer. So Nautilus is a hood that actually like raises and lowers when the wearer shrugs. And then Monarch features the shoulder mounted textiles that open and close in response to the wearer's bicep activity, um, you know, so on their arm. And so through these prototypes, we realized that uh, mounting servo motors on the body was a little tough um, and an interesting design challenge. So there are many amazing electronic toolkits out there for designing um, e-textiles and wearable projects, including the Arduino, Arduino Lilypad and the Adafruit Flora. However, uh, as we can see from this photo, these kits contain, contain many microcontrollers, sensors, and actuators, but there is only one example of an actuator that moves uh, a vibrating motor, and it moves a very small amount. <laughs> Uh, and if you're interested in wearable electronics, you might recognize the work of Hussein Chalayan, Anouk Wiprecht, and Benaz Farahi. So in looking at these beautiful examples of kin kinetic wearables projects um, such as these, we noticed that most of the ones that we were encountering were very specialized and labor intensive to produce. Um, so really sophisticated works um, that, that took quite a long time to come into being. So uh, incorporating motors and other kinetic actuators on the body has remained a more specialized practice, uh, mostly limited to more advanced practitioners or larger teams. So we asked ourselves, how can we make it easier for artists and designers to create their own kinetic wearables? And how can we get people started a little bit faster? So our first step in developing the kinetic wearables toolkit was to outline our design considerations, including wearability criteria, um, criteria for actuators, and attachment methods. So wearability is a term that refers to what makes something wearable. This can vary based on the wearer and the intended use. Um, we see in looking at fashion that comfort is sometimes a big consideration and sometimes not uh, taken into account at all. Um, and then, uh, but so we decided to develop a longer list of uh, wearable considerations for how we imagined uh, people might want to use motors on the body um, kind of generally. And then we decided to focus on the first three of these uh, for the initial version of the toolkit. So specifically, we wanted to be able to position the motors um, so as to protect the, the motor mechanism uh, from any interference, so push, pull, or bumping. Uh, we also wanted to be able to adjust the range and orientation of the, the motion in relation to the surface of the body that it's mounted on. And we also wanted to consider the stability of the attachment method. And this is because, you know, when, when you have two things that are moving, if the base is not solid, it will move in a way that you don't intend. Uh, so that was an important thing, especially when thinking about the kind of curved and squishy surface of the human body. So we began by considering what motors we might want to use for this and uh, to provide a variety of options in terms of motion and range and precision and so on. And uh, we settled on a selection of small motors. They're commonly used with hobbyists and DIY electronics projects. 
Um, these can all be driven by Arduino compatible microcontrollers and small batteries. Um, <clears throat> the, 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 we have a solenoid at the top, um, two servo motors that are actually the same size and shape, but one produces continuous rotary motion in either direction. You program the speed you want. The other one um, just moves in a range, typically 180 degrees, but you can program the position you want. And they physically look the same, so they can be interchanged. Um, the stepper motor is a very small one um, that uh, can be driven directly by uh, an Arduino microcontroller without a specialized driver circuit. And likewise, a solenoid, it's pretty low power, but uh, produces linear motion and um, um, is, is uh, a small form factor. So they're, you know, low risk, low cost. Um, these are t tend to be readily available and um, they're, they present us with some flexible uh, flexibility in terms of their use cases. And finally, in terms of design considerations, we looked at attachment methods. So how do we attach these things to the body? Uh, so we once again kind of put together a longer list, um, which included uh, you know, attaching to more rigid accessories or maybe adapting kind of special um, purpose items. Uh, also, we looked at uh, kind of garments specifically designed for motors, um, which were some of the, the examples we saw from other artists and designers earlier. However, for the sake of this toolkit and this first version, we decided to focus on this first approach uh, because it is versatile and doesn't depend on the use of specialized garments. So uh, yeah, we really focused on attaching motors to the body um, or to existing clothing uh, via straps or clips. So after some experimentation, we found that hook and loop straps worked really well. So basically Velcro, and actually this, this two-sided Velcro has become our, our favorite because you can use it in a lot of different ways. And then we also found uh, a neat key slot and tab approach used for attaching to various fabrics. So this is the same mechanism found on some garter clips. Um, and then we also explored a pin, pin method, which we'll see coming up. So what we're sharing with you today is our V1. Um, so our initial designs for the Kinetic Wearables Toolkit, which we hope will expand further. So it's a set of 3D printed mounts that enable attachment of kinetic actuators to clothing or to the body. There's a lot to expand upon, but we have found that this initial set of designs offers a variety of motion profiles and mount options. So Chris is gonna walk us through the current designs available through the toolkit. So here's one of the elements in the toolkit. It's used to attach a, a servo motor, the, the dark blue there, um, to some clothing and uh, it uses a 3D printed a uh, flexible base that's shown in pink. Um, so the motion is at the top there, the gray element, and, and the base is flexible and can mount to fabric using this pin and key slot. So the, the pin um, mounts from the back and kind of traps a little bit of fabric in there. So it makes it quick and, and easy to attach. You can, if you're doing something a bit more permanent or a bit more, you want a bit more durability or stability, you can of course, glue this base or Velcro it or stitch it to fabric. Um, you have some options there. The flexible uh, TPU material that's 3D printed, um, we found that to be a useful approach because it is a, a nice interface between the sort of stretchy, moving, curved uh, surface of a typical garment being worn and the rather rigid and unyielding boxy surface presented by the typical electric motor or actuator. So we've used this material in several places. Um, th in this case, the motor is being attached using a couple of small screws. Um, so you do need a couple of tools to do that, but it offers that a little bit of extra stability. Um, other times you want a different axis of motion, maybe you want to lift something, so we provided a different mount for that. This uh, servo motor base is for the 0 to 180 degree servo motor, 
um, some of these can be fairly powerful and you want to stabilize them with a more rigid mount. So um, this mount is printed, uh, 3D printed and rigid um, material and kind of protects the motor from being um, overloaded and twisted. In this case, it's attached uh, with a strap um, that uh, gives it a little bit more stability, but it's it's less conforming to the body than the flexible mounts. And again, this one, you need a few tools to put it together, so it's less quick and easy. For prototyping and experimentation and flexibility altogether, we provided a, another mount for servo motors that allows you to um, adjust the motion to your needs. This uh, mount for servo motor is uh, printed entirely in flexible um, TPU that allows you to adjust the motor's orientation without tools. So you can see the sort of tabs or ears that come from the side of the servo motor um, interface with a sort of star-shaped feature allowing you to pan and tilt this, this motor up and down. As well, you can change, you can sort of swivel it on the surface underneath a strap or by using the pin and key slot. This is uh, not as stable an arrangement with heavy loads as the previous example, but allows you quite a bit of, of flexibility. Uh, and you don't need tools to assemble this or adjust it. Now, there are times when you want a larger range of motion. Um, so we um, began experimenting with attaching a drive wheel to a, a servo motor to interface with larger moving elements. So this uses a servo motor, could be the um, small range 180 degree one or the continuous motion one. And it um, assembles on a flexible base using a, a rigid housing and a drive wheel that can uh, move a linear element or a, or a larger curved element, uh, larger distances. It, could be any length, shown here as a black arrow, but it, it could be something longer, shorter, um, or curved. So here you can see the, the mounting on fabric, <clears throat> but also the possibility of putting a much larger curved element there. So this is, this is potentially useful when you're uh, feeling a bit limited by the, the size of the small electric motors we're using. This is the um, small stepper motor I mentioned at the beginning. So this is a motor that's often used for things like um, speedometer needles in a car's dashboard um, or gauges. So it's um, quite precise, it's silent. Um, it can move to a, a programmable position or it can rotate continuously. Um, it is low power, lightweight, uh, inexpensive, but it is not very um, heavy duty. So it doesn't, you don't want to overload this. It doesn't have a lot of power. Um, so in this case, we've mounted it on sort of a brooch. Um, this is a rigid 3D printed um, round mount, about 45 millimeters in diameter. And it is mounted with a, a pin, kind of like a safety pin or a brooch um, anywhere. And being quite lightweight, um, it is uh, it's easy to mount in various locations on a garment. This stepper motor can be used directly by a microcontroller. You don't need specialized um, driver circuits to um, drive it because it is so low power. For uh, smaller motions like this, uh, we also have the option of producing linear motion using a solenoid. Uh, these are um, fairly powerful in terms of the force they put out. Um, the motion of this particular one is about five millimeters. That plunger moves in and out about five millimeters. Um, and um, the mount is uh, simple and we think versatile. 
um, mounting to curved surfaces and clothing using that same uh, tab and key slot arrangement or to itself um, in a loop. Um, it is um, easy to assemble the um, solenoid slides into the mount uh, just as a press fit. So it's easy to sort of move and adjust and stays in place fairly well. So that's the version one of our toolkit. Uh, we tried to provide some um, versatile options to um, aid in our experimentation and exploration. We also wanted to make this available to others who uh, might be inclined to uh, make use of it. So we provided a bill of materials where to get the motors and so on, um, and editable um, CAD files for anyone who might want to modify the designs to suit a particular purpose. You can also use them as presented here by just downloading the STL files and 3D printing the parts. Uh, so you can find that on our GitHub, the Social Body Lab, uh, that we'll also share this in the Discord. And so while we haven't had the opportunity yet to do any formal user testing, we have been printing out uh, these different modules from the kit and sharing them you know, fairly widely within our local communities. And so these are some examples of use uh, from an advanced wearables class at OCAD University where students created um, you know, different kinetic wearable prototypes using the mounts. And uh, we've also employed them recently in some workshops for the, the bodies and wearables uh, workshop series as part of um, the Bodies and Play project, which is hosted in collaboration with Dames Making Games. So uh, yeah, so that's pretty much um, what we've got so far. Uh, in terms of our future work, uh, there's a lot to be done in, in terms of thinking about kind of beyond <laughs> the motor mount. Um, and so, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be totally tackled by this toolkit, but it is worth thinking about. Um, so, so motors don't live in a void. Um, they need to connect to other things, including power and um, oftentimes a microcontroller. So we want to think about cable management and, and how we can build in any affordances for that um, into the designs, um, microcontroller management, uh, power management, et cetera. Of course, we want to iterate upon what we've done so far, and we would love to create additional designs. Um, and so we would like to do some slightly more formal user testing to get feedback and see what people think about them and what they make with them. Um, also, we would like to play more <laughs> with our own toolkit ourselves and, and make some uh, expressive kinetic wearables, which we'd love to share with you. Um, and then finally, we're, we're really excited about the possibility of um, other people using this stuff in collaborations, which is why we wanted to share this work with you today. So yeah, um, thanks so much for uh, hearing about our work. Um, and thanks so much to the Open Hardware Summit organizers for having us. Um, we're really glad to be there virtually and we, we hope that you have a wonderful two days together and um, we hope to connect with you soon. We'll be on the Discord if you have any questions. Bye.